Racers Marshall Pruitt. I'm drinking the beer that had one sip taken by Callum Eilat, who we're going to hear from afterwards. I did clean off the top here. Uh, we're going to have a, a nice long insight here with Callum about just the crazy week that he's had. So that'll be coming up uh, at the end of the video, or actually right after this. But end of the video stuff, we have Catherine Legg coming. Nick Leo, my shooter. Who else did we interview? I've forgotten already. Scott McLaughlin, Scott McLaughlin RC, Anderson. RC Enerson, and then we have a separate video with RC's team owner Bill Abel where, man, you want to talk about beautiful, beautiful guy. Qualifying day one is done at the Indianapolis 500. What did we have? Not exactly what we expected, and that is what I love. It had been the Chip Ganassi Racing Party Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They're going to be fastest for sure. Oh, no, they weren't. That would go to Aero, McLaren, and Team Chevy. The bow tie, ooh, making some serious power. This was a beautiful thing to watch. Alexander Rossi, fastest for the majority of the day. His teammate, Felix Rosenquist, went out later. Edged him by just a little bit. Tony Kanon is in there. Pato Award is in there. In the top 12 who transfer and go into qualifying on Sunday. We're going to have a top 12 session where the fastest six carry over to later qualify, go for the pole. But nonetheless, in that top 12 who do carry over all four Aero McLaren entries, huge congratulations to them their technical director and overall boss, Gavin Ward. We're seeing they did some pretty amazing work again, along with Team Chevy finding some holy poop horsepower from year to year here. Chip Ganassi Racing, not that far away, right? Alex Pillow, super quick, got all four of their cars in the Fast 12. So congratulations to them. Will they be able to find what they were missing overnight? Got to admit, they didn't look like they had what it took, but again, we're going to come back tomorrow. Could they find more? Could Air McLaren get something a little bit wrong? We don't know. They weren't the only ones. Who else was there? One of the greatest surprises of the day. Happiest surprises. AJ Foyt Racing. Both entries. Santino Ferrucci, a.k.a. Santucci, that number 14. AJ Foyt Racing, what is that? Chevy. Rookie teammate, fastest rookie on the day. Benjamin Peterson in the Fast 12 as well. Wrote a little story, might already be up on racer.com about the Michael Cannon effect. Cannon championship winning engineer with Scott Dixon at Ganassi in 2020. Pole winner here with Scott Dixon in the last two years. So he moves over to be the technical director at AJ Foyt Racing. There you have some good engineers there, but not a surprise that Michael Cannon now at Foyt is bringing his very special skills and knowledge of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to benefit the Foyt team. So, so happy for them. So all four Aero McLarens, all four Ganassis, both Foyts. And then how did we fill out that 12? Well, we had one from Ed Carpenter Racing. Thought we might have two or three, but good old Renus VK marching that 500 miles with his special tribute helmet to one of the worst bands ever, the Proclaimers. <laughs> Love the kid, but he's a little cuckoo. Uh, and Team Penske got one in the Fast 12. We were just talking yesterday with the team and we think we found stuff. We're going to be faster and more competitive and didn't really work. Joseph Newgarden tried like hell, went out multiple times. Scotty McLaughlin, who we'll hear from a little later, we spoke with him after I think his first run, maybe second, but two of them came up a little bit short, didn't make it into the Fast 12, so not transferring over they're locked into place, but we know that the race is why we are here. So we're not gonna go too nuts about who's in and who's out of the Fast 12, but nonetheless, Team Penske, again, kinda willpower scraping in, uh, not what we expected. Let's also talk about some other not in the Fast 12s, another story that should be up on racer.com right now, Andretti Autosport, five entries. How many are in the Fast 12? Zero! Our man Kirk Kirkwood, Kyle Kirkwood, uh, he getting his name wrong is almost like an extracurricular activity, it seems. Um, Kyle Kirkwood, the fastest and by a significant amount over his teammates, but spoke with Romain Groschon. He was like, this is what we got. 
I knew we weren't going to be there, and he was right. Marco Andretti, who always says what he thinks, he was not happy. Really surprised that with the great progress of Andretti Autosport this season, I know it's only qualifying, but man, they've been fast all year. Three pole positions so far, and none in the fast 12? They're not going to be happy tonight by any means. And their friends and affiliate, Meyer Shank Racing, Elio Castro Nevis, Simon Pagano, also not in the Fast 12, anywhere near the Fast 12. So collectively, the, the greater seven car Andretti camp. Big question mark as to what went wrong there. Uh, we're going to get into more of the what went wrong, then swing back to the what went right. The four drivers going into tomorrow's LCQ, last chance qualifying. To get on to the final row, someone's going home. Led by, sadly, Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing. Graham Ray Hall, slowest of all. Teammate Christian Lungard was in, then out, then in, then out. Stingray Rob from Dale Coin Racing with Rick Ware Racing. He tried like heck. Nothing happened for Stingray, unfortunately. And then finally, Jack Harvey. The, the Ray Hall cars are as flat out as can be. If you had a chance to watch qualifying, be it on Peacock or NBC, there was one very unique dynamic to the RLL cars. Didn't matter what time of day, didn't matter what amount of wind, whether it was a lot or none, they would fire through turn two, come out of turn four, and if you looked at the speed being shown across telemetry in the broadcast, if they came, so any one of them seemingly came out of turn four at 230 miles an hour, 229. Normally for the, the other cars, the faster cars, you'd see whatever number they were at coming out of turn two or turn four, add five, six, seven miles per hour, maybe even more. We saw way too many times where they added two, three miles per hour by the end of the straight, maybe four, but the building almost nothing between the end of the corner going way down this long straight, getting into the next turn, shocking. So plagued all of them except for Catherine Legg. P30, I believe, is where she ultimately ended up. Catherine Legg, newest member of the IndyCar team, last member of the IndyCar team. Cat hasn't been here in a decade. Telling y'all, behind that wheel, she is a badass. What does she do? Leads the entire team. So Cat, the only one of the four RLL cars that are safe and locked into position. The other three, plus Stingray Rob, going into that LCQ. One of them is going home, which is insane to consider that three out of the four RLL cars are there. Coin team as well, David Malukas, Stingray's teammate was kind of dreadful as well all day. Very late in the day, finally broke through, got in safely into the top 30, so he's locked into position. A uh, piece about this we put up on racer.com as well. Didn't go into it too much in depth there, and I'll spare you here because we've got a lot of video stuff for today, but what happened? That's the question. What happened? It's been happening almost all year for RLL. They went through a massive engineering shuffle during the off season, moved a lot of parts and pieces around in race engineers, brought in a brand new technical director, and never met him. Uh, so none of what I'm about to say is the least bit personal, anything like that, it's just observing things. Came highly recommended, Formula One, all kinds of Formula One experience, known as an aerodynamic guru. Never done ovals, knows nothing about ovals, but is a master of aero. We know that aerodynamics are important here at the Indy 500. There's not much left to learn. These cars, these Delar DW12s, have been around for more than a decade. The teams know seemingly everything about them. Chevy and Honda know everything about them. There's not a lot of stones left to be overturned in terms of performance gains. Just saying, if you have the overarching person in charge of all your engineering, everything on the technical side, who has zero oval knowledge and has vast expertise, but in an area that isn't what is going to win you the Indy 500, I'm not placing this all on him by any means. I'm just saying with all the changes RLL made during the off season, 
There was vast hope placed that they would lead to something big. I, I do not look forward to waking up soon after the Indy 500 and reading of some possible changes because it's this kind of thing for any team that leads the ownership and leadership to say, this ain't working. We gotta, we gotta get things done. Uh, we just saw a couple of head coaches in the NBA who got their teams to the playoffs and were in, again, the thing everyone aspires towards, but then got bounced out not too long afterwards. Get fired and you go, wait a minute, you got so close to the mountaintop, but you're fired now? Imagine coming here, spending tons of money on R&D, tons of money on personnel, and you have three of your four cars scraping and hoping to get into the race. Uh, yeah, it's just the reality. Look, I've been fired before for being very poor at my race engineering job, so I speak from experience. It ain't pretty. Even if it's not your fault, things can get to be really rough if things don't go the way they are expected. We talk about this a lot with our man Callum Eilat, so I'll leave most of that for that conversation, but Augustine Canapino, dude, you're incredible. Uh, safely qualified for his first Indy 500. Uh, looked like he's been doing this for a long time. Uh, did a little bit of wall contact on his most impressive run. And is there any question that this guy is a legend, right? He's already a legend in Argentina with his 15 touring car championships. But to come here and not just play things safely, but push so hard that he has a liar of a run going unfortunately got into the wall i think on lap three and had to come in but this guy is amazing last thing here we're going to talk about is able motorsports got that separate video i mentioned with bill abel owner of the team it is to me the greatest story of this indy 500 and one of the greatest i can remember in i don't know how many years of a tiny team with no experience that is going to bed tonight locked into the Indy 500 while some other teams that have been around for 20, 30, however many years are not going to bed tonight with any confidence that they are going to get to stay and play in the 107th Indy 500. I don't know why Callum Eilat did not like this beer. It is freaking amazing. This was a gift of LAT photographer Phil Abbott a, uh, a man who is one of the greatest home brewers of beers in the IndyCar series. So, Funky Phil, thank you for this. Uh, I need to consume more of it. Uh, Nick Leo, show us a shoe, show us a foot. Our, our photographer, editor, uh, something. Look at that. Uh, this guy's amazing here. Absolutely love him. He threatened to dress up as me for Halloween. Maybe we can get him dressed up with me as me in one of my plaid shirts although it'd be way too big on him, and have him do one of the daily reports next week when we're not on track. But anyways, I'm Marshall Pruitt. Thanks for following along. It sounds, might sound a little lame or whatever, but like, really do appreciate you. We've been having more and more people watch our silly little videos, try and bring you deep inside the sport, give you some context, have a little bit of fun. None of this stuff is that serious. We are not curing cancer. Hunger is not being solved because of this, but we're here at this greatest of American motor racing churches doing the thing that we love, watching IndyCar, loving IndyCar, debating stuff, rooting for everyone, even those who are struggling like mad. So let's get to our man Callum, who's been through the wars. I apologize, there's gonna be a couple bleeps in that conversation, but that's okay. I'd blame it on the beer, but it's not the beer. I've had half, half my other beer in this one. But uh, thanks again, we'll be back to you tomorrow. We're gonna to know who's on pole. Gonna have someone who's no longer allowed to continue here. That is the sad part, but first week the Indy 500 is almost done. Got more tech videos coming, and uh, Nick, time to edit. What is that? A beer, a grown it's, it's, beer. What's, what's, it, what's it flavored with? Tears of race car drivers. I don't Wait. know what to think about that. Well, you want to try this one? Brandyland. Is this sponsored? No.
Oh. Not at all. Oh, you just blew these. These are gifts. No, these are gifts from Phil Abbott, photographer from LAT. Oh, thank God. I thought Who this was sponsored. I... Yeah, no. I'm, I'm not sure about this one, mate. Well, I only drank a little bit of this one. All right, I'm gonna. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna give that one a break. I'll go back to my lolly. Uh, we call them these uh, ice lollies. Uh, that's perfect. Ice lolly, eye lot here. Uh, yeah, your hands full of beer, but that's okay. Uh, hey, you get to play race car some more. Uh, you get to stay here, be in the Indy 500, and as of a few days ago, it's okay. Yeah, we we'll just. Uh, that didn't seem like that was going to be much of a possibility. Um, among the best stories of this event so far, the hardships your team has gone through. I don't want to get into all the stuff because we'd be speaking for at least an hour or more, but this has not just been a change the chassis, then everything becomes good. This has been real questions as to when should we, what should we do, how do we get to where we are? Uh, I mean, we'll get to that, but to sum it up, I've done the open test and the week's worth of Indy 500 testing in a day. That's what I've done. So, in some ways you can describe me as a hero for just getting on with it. You can describe the team as heroes for just getting on with it today. Um, but yeah, that's the simple way of putting it instead of describing an hour. But of course you want a bit more content than that. But, you know, that's, that's if, the, if, the, if the thumbnail could be 20 seconds, that was the one. Give, not really. give him a tiny bit of beer and he gets spicy. We got spicy eye lot. I like that. So you've been through the wars. Yes. And we haven't even completed the first week of the Indianapolis 500. So let's do a little bit of real talk here. Sure. Your let's car, and you're going to get to bleep this magical Nick Leo photography. Show a body, a thumbs up from Nick this time. Uh, at the Indy Open Test, your car was complete. The team went to work trying to make that car better. You came out, hit the track on Wednesday, and the car was a slightly different variation of <laughs> Improved a little bit. I'm not saying it. I'm Be not saying it. Exactly. He's also, he's also not refuting it. Uh, continue through on Thursday. Slightly better version of a polished turd. Finally, after going out Friday, very few laps, the decision is made to change the chassis. Tell me about the inner dialogue with the team, because I know folks are pushing different ideas that led to this being a very late change. You've overcome in the end, but this wasn't pretty the whole way. No. Um, so yeah, I, I, open test it, it really wasn't good and then was super the, whatever issue i had was then super amplified by the wind um so i wasn't already wasn't comfortable in the morning and then wasn't comfortable in the afternoon um and of course at that time you know the uh, uh, wasn't but it was it wasn't good it wasn't looking good and we we had a lot of things to kind of go through and um Basically, we, there was a reason we didn't um, go for the chassis at that point because there were some other valid things that could, were, in, in my eyes and in the team's eyes, was statistically a higher chance of being wrong. The chassis was brand new. Uh, on a stiffness test that we checked after the test, it was, it was the highest stiffness. So, you know, you, you would hope that there wasn't an issue with it, right? There, of course, now in hindsight, yes, you, you would go that there, there was, but there was just nothing at that time that said, okay, we need to commit to the chassis. Um, so we, 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 we continued with it and I was, I was happy to do so. Um, and went into Wednesday and again, just, just, not, just not happy with it. Just, just never had the confidence on the entry. Um, and it's, it's very difficult to explain. Like we couldn't even see it on the data. There was nothing that could tell the engineers what I was feeling except just me. And that adds to more complication because it's me trying to portray this feeling that no one else can see, no one else can feel. And look, I got a good ass, not just physically, but also in these cars. Um, all right, calm down. Um, and uh, yeah, it was just, we knew, or I, I, I knew 
it wasn't right. And there's certain ways you can um, say that. And Wednesday, I, I, I think at the end of the day, I was like, I, I really, you know, in a bit of desperation, I think we need to change the car. And at that point, again, we went through it and again, speaking and, and all, all the reasoning behind it, because we missed Tuesday as well with the rain, we missed the open test second day with the rain. Although I was a bit on the fence with it, we then went to, to continue with the car. Um, and again, that was a decision that I then agreed to do because of the, the reasons as to why. Uh, and we chose to work with it. And we got better with the car. We, we, it, it became a, a drivable car, just slow, right? I was, I was able to do laps flat and at the end of Wednesday and, uh, um, and most of Thursday. Uh, and then I got in it on Friday and as soon as we went to quali, it was like, it's, it's just so out the window, it's not gonna work. Um, and at that point, you know, I, I probably, it, enough was enough. And uh, speaking with Ricardo, we decided to change it. Um, and yeah, some would say it's desperate or whatever, but we tried so hard to make it, make it work and we lost two out of the five days that we'd had because of the rain or yeah. sorry two compared to the five and um yeah we, we we went for the change and it was a big big gamble but as soon as i got in the car i just didn't have this feeling that i had before mm. it, it, it just gone and it was almost like a kind of pivoting um of course then we had to bring this car in the window then you have all these challenges of doing i, I had two practice runs plus an install straight into qualifying uh, because we were going faster in qualifying, that changed everything of how it was behaving as well. So it took off into turn one three times in a row. And then I knew I knew the car was quick. We just had to put it together. Second run, I put two and a half out of the four laps together. I scraped the last one through and yeah, that was it. I, I think if I'd got them all four clean, we had good pace. The, the, the pace was good, which for a car that we threw together last night, honestly, we did, we did a super job. Job, sorry. Um, He's going through puberty, but it's still okay. at the age yeah. of 24 eating an ice cream. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, at the end of it, you know, walked away with quite a good story. Uh, a lot of stress. I actually had a little cry on the in lap mm. of that second quali run because just, you know, so much pain and effort and yeah, stress of, of trying to explain something that isn't explainable. Um, and achieve something that you know most people thought was impossible. So uh, I, I'm firstly really proud of myself for sticking in it. As much as people may complain about me, I'm not. Nor I am wrong sometimes, but I'm not normally wrong. Um, and I'm really happy with the team. You know, they 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 stuck by me. They changed the they changed the chassis. And we did an amazing job today to, to get the most out of it. I mean, considering my teammate who has been running the whole week, uh, finished just ahead of me. Of course, he, his third run was, was a close one, but we did a great job to get the car there. That's, that's mega. So again, big thanks to all of them. They worked super hard um, and yeah. Wow. So, so sorry about that. What are you sorry about? He's English, he says sorry a lot, that's okay. Couple things here. Believing a driver is a really important thing. And this kid is crazy good. But as he mentioned, he's feeling things that data isn't necessarily saying, aha, we see the same thing. There's a bit of a, we need to walk along this journey with you to get to the same place you're telling us you are at. And that's part of why it took a while to make this final change validation for everybody's belief that this needed to happen it did happen a great story to tell but here's another thing after that first run where if we're looking at the average lap speed you were nowhere near being close enough to being in the field i spoke to you after and i'm paraphrasing but you basically said i'm going to be in and there was no doubt no question while looking at a average lap speed that on the surface you go okay, you're on crack, and I believe that's illegal here in this yeah. series, but his confidence in the, the quality of this car, the team, you knowing what you needed from the car to be better, them being able to do that, 
this is really where this story takes a drastic turn. So tell folks about that, mate, where confidence could have been completely destroyed with what you went through, and yet this inner resolve, which you have shown throughout your career, came to the surface, helped get everyone to where you are. Yeah, it's tough though, because like, I was super upset with how it went, um, that first run. And uh, it just takes a bit of time to piece together what you need. And like, of course, I had to do a bit of media and, and as I was going along, you were, you were one of the last to get to, but I was just thinking it through and I'm like, you know, actually, it, I did a 230 the first lap with a humongous lift into one. Like, actually the car is fast. It just needs to be drivable. And um, at that point I knew I could probably get another two runs in the day. And even if I had to, I'd go into bump day. And that would have been a blessing because I would have been, or not, you don't want to be in it, but I would have got a fast car if I'd been able to work, uh, work to that time. Um, and look, I, the moment we committed to changing the chassis um, and there was no going back on it, uh, I, just, I just had a relief and a, a confidence because you know, we knew we were going to straight on to Augustine's setup. Uh, I would have to work with it a bit. I didn't think I'd have to work with it as much as I did, mm. but I knew it was, gonna, it was gonna work and I knew I could do a good job. So I, I, last night I was like, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. And after that first run, Took a bit of time, but yeah, by the time I got to you, I was like, I, I, I can do it. Um, and this is kind of a bit of a thing with me, like probably after every run when I was working with the other car, I'd get a bit like, oh, I can't, I can't do it, I can't do it. I can't keep trying, because it's just, it's not working, it's not working. And maybe that's a reason as well that we, we stuck at it longer was because I'd come back after 20 minutes, go to the bathroom or something, walk back and be like, okay, I think we need to try this, I think we need to try that. And with the team as well, it wasn't just me. My engineer did a, a great job of trying to keep me in the mindset and calm, because uh, you know sometimes I can be a bit tough. Uh, but yeah, at the end of the day, that's that's the reason why guys like me are employed. Is because you know we keep at it, we push in the right directions, and if you trust us, we can we can do a good job. Okay, we're gonna let him go and finish. What do you call that again? Ice lolly. An ice lolly. That's so cute. Uh, wanted to have him as our main feature, main guest for our end of day report. We got a couple more coming up here, a couple more interviews, but wanted Callum and I wanted to just let him speak and share this story because we're celebrating Felix Rosenquist. We're going a million miles an hour. They were super And fast. we're celebrating all kinds of oh, people. Yeah, but can we just add on to this, right? Let me just finish and no, shut up for no. a minute. I love McLaren, this guy here, whatever. Ganassi, and the fact that today, you needed a plus 230 to be in the, almost a 231 minimum to get into the top 30. That's ridiculous. Not as it, only as ridiculous, oh, they up, brought man. him up for the press conference, although I'd already arranged with IndyCar that you and I were gonna do this first, but they decided, screw you Pruitt, we're gonna bring him in. But where were you seated at the very end at the kids table? Right in the middle. That's because I, I put myself there. Most important driver. I put myself there. I put myself there. Dominant. Because I don't guy. care. I'm just here. Super type A personality. is a lot to deal with. But, and he struggles eating his ice lolly, but that's okay. I wanted us to spend the most time with him because we can talk about the easy things. Hey, driver from team, whatever, you're fast and things are great. Tell us about it. I'm great. We're fast. Whatever. This is the realest part of the Indy 500 where he's in the show. It's come from immense talent, but also fortitude and belief on his part, the team's part. I'm always gonna gravitate towards the ones where they are just in the, here's another edit, Nick, in the shit from the beginning, and they find their way out. So again, we celebrate all those who did high achievement, who are gonna be in the Fast 12. These types of stories are the ones that I love most because they're the realest. So, and we also real. learned, according to him, he's got a great ass. Why are you standing away from me? Catherine Lake, would you slow down? <laughs> you haven't been here in a decade. We already spoke about this a little bit, but you have looked quick all week among your Ray Hall Edelman Lanigan racing teammates. Tell me about first qualifying attempt here. I know you want to be P1, 
but at least for what you're able to do, it looks like your car has great potential. Tell me about this. Yeah, I, I think we still have to work on the race car, if I'm honest, but I think I went as fast as that car could go, and I think we're all relatively happy. The guys gave me a great car, so I, could, I was able to stay flat, which the others weren't able to. So I had it easier, I would say, than the, my teammates, but I learned after their three runs what I think we needed. Um, yeah, we could go again and maybe we'd go a little bit quicker, but I think it was a solid run. And I think now we can focus on the race car. We've got two hours on Monday, two hours on Friday, and we really need to get it sorted so that we can get up and underneath people and go racing. Want to close on love and support. You've always got love everywhere you go, so that's not new. See, look at that. We got heart hands going at Indianapolis. <laughs> You're not unaccustomed to having folks giving you a lot of love, but I swear I've seen more for you here than I can recall your last two times. You'd mentioned previously just the amount of women here as well. This is a different place than you were last year. Can you tell us about that from what you've experienced then to now? Because it seems like we're in a great place. I am. Like, you get older and you get less emotional and you get smarter and hopefully you get better, right? Um, and it's definitely changed. Like, I've noticed there's a lot more female fans here than there used to be. And everybody, yeah, it's just been super positive. There hasn't been anybody moaning or, um, you know, girls shouldn't be here. Or I've had some of that in the past. It just seems to be really awesome, and I appreciate the support so much. I mean, it means the world to you. I think those dinosaurs are extinct now. I hopefully. hope so. Hopefully. <laughs> Catherine Lake doing big things like always. <laughs> Kidding aside, fast. Not everything you wanted. Did you feel things where you said, okay, a couple things oh, yeah. we'll, we can tweak and come back? I mean, we haven't run since this time yesterday. So I think it's it's the benefit and non-benefit of like going, like having another run yesterday. But I think we're in a good spot. I think the, like the pace in the car is really good. I think our first lap could be even faster if we're, and there was a couple of hiccups on that first lap that, that I'm going to go back and tell the team right now. But um, yeah, I think we can go close to a 34 there on that first lap and that'll help. Tell me about Team Chevy year to year, mate, because last year Honda mopped the floor. We knew Chevy was going to go home, total revenge mindset. At least so far, it looks like the bow ties found something. What do you feel? Yeah, look, absolutely. Chevy have done a fantastic job, fuel mileage and uh, and on the power here, so the oval. So I'm, I'm really excited. You know, I think we just need to qualify the front. I didn't get in the top 12. I, 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 I want to be in the top 12. I want to be in the shootout just for fun, <laughs> have a go. And, and I think Chevy are going to help us do that. Last thing for you, I know you're here full locked into driving mindset. Of the 500s you've done, tell me about the crowd and the feel, because i got to admit, it feels like there's more people and more energy we've had in a while. Oh, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, even like, you know, going around the floor and stuff, the, the, the stands, there's a few people in the stands, you know, I haven't seen that before. I, I mean, some of the other drivers might have seen it, but I haven't really, so, um, yeah, I'm excited. I think this is going to be one of the biggest 500s ever. R.C. Enerson, you are completely ridiculous. I realize qualifying's not done. We're looking here at the scoring pylon, and where are you? You're 27. 27. Feeling like you might be going back out? Is there more to get? What do you think? Um, we're gonna have to see. I mean, there's there's a couple cars that are pretty close. I know I know Malukas will be fast, so. We'll see what happens there. I think we're a little conservative on our first run. Okay. I think we ran just a little too much, uh, too much downforce, um, and just a little bit of a balance change. So, if we have to go, we'll go. But if, if we can get it locked in the top 30 today, that's that's the overall goal. So, if, even if we're sitting 28th with however much time we got to go, we don't know if we want to risk it or not. So we're just kind of hanging out and seeing what happens here. I'm going to keep mentioning this because it needs to be mentioned. This is Able Motorsports fourth day ever of being an IndyCar team. They are currently ahead of all four Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan Racing entries and some others. Not asking you to compare yourself against them, but just tell me about the pride of this little band of badasses that is showing folks that if you got a dream and you got talent, you've got a chance at Indy 500. Yeah, I mean, these guys have just been so good on the car prep and at Indy you know that's a lot of it a lot of it's car prep and just how, how fast your car can go because most of it the, the way you qualify here is you're flat and if you lift you're going to lose so much time so it's just how well your car is balanced and then just how free it can be to, to create that speed and these guys have just done an amazing job I mean we're 
where we're sitting right now, and I think we're still more speed behind that. So we'll, we'll see what happens here, but it's they've been amazing. Fourth day at the Speedway with these guys. Bill's been amazing. John Bruner, he's awesome. Even, if anybody's ever met him, they know him well. It's, it's, he's, he's awesome. He loves racing, and they've they put together a really good program. Best story. Best story here at the Speedway. Keep going, son. Thank you.